Today's video topic is how to do the dynamic text boxes like you see in this report here. Um, I feel like I've gone over this in one of my other videos, but somebody asked me for a link to it and I literally couldn't find it. So I'm just going to make a separate video for it. Um, there's a few different ways you can do this. I'm using the text box here because I feel like that is the most straightforward to set up, but you can also do it with the HTML visuals. And the kind of cool thing about these is that they accept whatever filters you have applied to the page. So if I cross filter by, say, Southwest Territory, it's going to automatically adjust the text in this box. So sales are up 7% and this was the top selling object. Um, and same thing with, say, if I were to click on components here, it's going to go and look at only things in the component category. So it's kind of an interesting way to create a narrative around your data. And um, let's get into it. Um, so I'm just going to copy this to a blank page so that we can copy what was done here. So all you need to do is create a text box. And so we're just going to start typing in this text box. So the parts that are not going to be dynamic, you can just enter in as normal text to so sales. R. And then for this measure, you can tell which one it's using by clicking on it. So if you forget which one, um, so it looks like it's this text YOY sales. And so if I come over here, I can add a value. So this plus value option here, that's going to let you enter in a measure. And this uses the Q&A functionality in Power BI. Um, but you don't have to use it like Q&A. So I would kind of recommend creating an explicit measure for this versus trying to have it guess what you're trying to do just so that it's um, consistent. So this one, yeah. And you can format here if you want to. It should follow whatever font you've got in your text box, but sometimes it wigs out and does its own thing. So if you need to change it, you can change it here and then give it a name. and save and so that's inserted it here and you'll notice that there's an underline on it so that's what tells you that it's an inserted value but the um this underline does not show up in the web browser i spent a bunch of time trying to figure out how to get it to go away because one time i did it a whole paragraph of inserted measure text and it looked really weird and um it turns out that it's not actually <laughs> doesn't actually show up anywhere except in the desktop. So don't worry about that if you don't like it. If you do want it underlined, you can still highlight this and use the underline formatting here. It can be kind of hard to get it to listen to what you're doing. So just you can sometimes have to fill around with it. I've had these um, I've had these break occasionally too, where they just stop doing what you want. And in that case, sometimes you have to erase them and start over. Um, I mean, erase the text in the box, not recreate measures or anything like that. But they are, they're a little bit buggy, in my opinion. And so we're going to keep going with our text here. The This next part, the fiscal year, so this, is, this represents the current fiscal year. And this data is not refreshing. So I, um, my measure for getting the current fiscal year is a little bit janky because it's not actually the current fiscal year. So don't, we're not going to look at that measure because um, I don't want anybody to think that it's a valid way to actually look at the current fiscal year because this is the latest data in here. It's 2022, but it's 2023 right now. So, so I've got a... Oh, it's latest, latest fiscal year. I think this will get the right one. Yeah, so there's the right number, and we can call this latest Y. I might already have used that one. I don't know. Looks like not. Okay. Oh, and let me actually go in and show you uh, how I did this measure up here, because that might be relevant if people are interested in that. So the idea with this one is that if the sales is down, that word up will change to down. And so it is this one. So basically I've got a variable that gets the year over year change percent. And then I have a switch that says if that percent is greater than zero, then add the text up. 
If it's less than zero, add the text down. If it's blank, then say no data. And then I just got an else of blank here. And the um, when you start combining text letters with numeric measures, it is going to make the whole thing output text and you lose the formatting settings that you've used in your measure or your calculated column or whatever. So you have to basically redo those parts. So I'm rounding it here and multiplying it by 100 to make it a percent. Um, here's the round. So it's rounding the um, that times 100 to zero decimals and then adding on a percentage sign. You could also use format here. I just used concatenate because it was easier for this particular thing, but um, either one will work. And the top, it looks like I forgot a hyphen in the other one, top selling product. And this mountain bike, let's see which one was this. So this is gets the top product by amount. So let's look up that one. This one, right. Okay, so that one, if you're curious about the DAX behind it, what am I doing in this one? Let's see, it looks like a top end calculation. So I added a couple of single quotes around it just to make it kind of stand out and then look like it's quotes thing um, in the text here. So that's what this, there, where this is coming from is I'm concatenating that with the top N product for the latest fiscal year sales measure. And this is just a comment. So that's what that is. And here is this last part was, what was this one? Sales amount for the top product. So. And the idea with these is that they are dynamic in the sense that they'll change with whatever filters you've applied to the page. You can make them static if you want to, but I feel like you lose something in that, like the whole point of, of inserting these measures is to make the um, make it adjust to what you do on the page, I feel like, as a... All right, so we're inserting, what was this, the top... Sales amount of top product, this one. All right. I can't spell top fraud. Okay, so the sales amount of the top product this measure is. This one here. So what's going on here is we're getting the ID of the top product in this variable so that we can use that as a filter and calculate down here. So calculate the latest fiscal year sales and filter that by the product ID is equal to the top product ID that we calculated up top. And put in a period. All right, so you can format these if you want to. So for instance, this in this part, I've bolded and colored that text and that's not dynamic. Um, there's, if I had to guess, there's probably a way to get it to be dynamic, um, but I know you can insert, you can use the unichar characters in here and you can make those colored. So you could um, hypothetically uh, insert those in the text too. So that's like the green up and the red down little arrows and things like that. And you can use, there's, um, you can use all of the unichar icons in here too, which is kind of fun. So you like put stars and hearts or whatever <laughs> in here if you wanted to. So I'm going to bold it and then make it, let's make it pink this time. Where's my underline? There it is. Okay. So if we filter this on, say, for instance, the category of clothing, it's going to change all of these values. So clothing apparently is up 37% and the top selling product by sales amount was this classic vest. And if I filter it on... Let's see, is there a region in here? Sales territory, that's what I called it. Canada, 
Apparently Canada is down 0%. This is probably a rounding issue where it's rounded it to 0%, but it's actually down point, negative 0.01% or something like that. Um, Germany's doing pretty well. All right, so that's how to make dynamic text boxes in Power BI. Thank you for watching.